really need you to make me something. You can bring me an order, or you can burn. Make me something. I will make you ash. I haven't been excited to play a new game for a very long time. Ever since my review of Primordia, the developer Wormwood Studios' previous game, I have been anxiously waiting for this one. This was the time when I laid my eyes on the screenshots for Strangeland. It looked weird and abstract. It reminded me of Sanatorium, a point-and-click adventure game from 1998. And that's a good thing, the game is wicked. And that's not a coincidence, the developer cites as an inspiration Sanatorium. If you are looking for a short summary, here it is. Strangeland is very good. If you like games with weird and strange environments, and a story full of metaphors that allows you to draw your own conclusions, you are in for a treat. Since this is a story heavy game, I'll try to avoid spoilers as much as I can. Most of the footage you see will be from the beginning of the game. Also, I'll try to minimize showing the puzzle solutions. However, there can still be some spoilers, keep that in mind. The game opens with the main character waking up in a straight jacket on a winding road above an endless abyss. A sign next to him reads Strangeland. He sees in the distance a strange place and with no other option he starts walking there. Upon reaching the entrance a giant open mouth starts telling unfunny jokes. I don't want to tell you a joke. I don't want to tell you anything at all. But you know the problem with me? I never could keep my big mouth shut. <laughs> <laughs> you will actually see him a lot and every time he will try to tell a funny joke. Upon entering, a woman with golden hair jumps in the well in the middle. Wait! Goodbye, my love. She's gone. A phone rings and a voice oddly sounding like the main character tells him everything is his fault. This is all your fault. You miss all the obvious signs. You let everything slip through your fingers. And you're no good at fixing things. That's why she's dead. That's why you're here. Right? Now you must find a way to save the woman. Without getting into spoiler territory, the story is sad and disturbing simultaneously. The disturbing part is thanks to the visuals. The best part is, nothing is spilled, laid out, written directly, explained to the player. You have to come to your own conclusions. The whole plot is full of metaphors for things that happened. Some are obvious, for others you need to pay attention. If you do, some characters can drop hints and by the end you gather the pieces of the puzzle. If you are willing to dig even deeper, suddenly you will find a mixture of Nordic, Icelandic, Greek mythos and British Isle folklore, maybe, intertwined in a coherent story. Everything has a meaning, every character has a purpose, you just have to figure it out for yourself. What I got from the story is, it's about loss, acceptance, doubts, inner demons, forgiveness and learning to let go. I know there are at least two endings, so depending on which one you get, the story will change. If you ever played an adventure game, you know what to expect with light twist on the formula. For the rest, you collect items, use or combine them, for later use, talk to NPCs to piece the story and get hints on what's your next objective. All this is for solving the puzzles to progress in the game. The light twists I'm talking about are the hint system and the puzzle solutions. Some puzzles have more than one solution, which is rare, I think, in an adventure game. It offers some replayability if you dive back to see what you've missed in terms of the story. Here in the puzzles is where my biggest issue lays, and it's highly subjective. Besides one, I found the rest of the puzzles a tad easy, however your mileage may vary. For you, they might be more difficult than for me, and I'm not a hardcore adventure game player. There is one that I brute forced, at least that's how it felt. 
There was no hint of what you have to do, I didn't use the phone, so I just started playing around until I realized what I have to do. Another one felt a bit too cryptic about the solution, but for the most part there was a nice escalation of difficulty. And those complaints I have might be something from my side, I might have missed a clue. Another interesting idea is the phone from the beginning, it's the hint system. When you dial zero you start to get clues on how to solve a puzzle and if you're really stuck, the voice on the other side will tell you the solution, but be prepared to be belittled. I used it only once for a puzzle that was probably the hardest and seems like other people were stuck like me. The clever part is, the hints are not only there to help, but also the phone is connected to the narrative. As I said, everything in the game is with a purpose. Three years ago, when I saw the first screenshots, they were amazing, but nothing prepared me for the fantastic visuals. Each new area, each new character, each new character close up made me gasp. All the characters feel taken from a tales as old as the world and they are to a certain degree. The amount of details put in every section is astonishing. The whole game takes place in a nightmarish version of a carnival standing in the middle of an endless abyss. The place looks familiar yet distant and dark. A carnival should be a happy place but not here. It's a place of sadness and cruelty but in the sense of what we do to ourselves. You see a roller coaster in the distance, but the tracks are twisted and broken. There is a character with gazing holes where his eyes were because he wanted to be enlightened with wisdom. His close-up portrait is haunting. Others wear these big giant man masks and many more, all done with exceptional detail. This is one of those games that will age gracefully because the pixel art is ageless. I sent screenshots to a friend and he loved the visuals. I don't want to spoil too much, but let's just say Strange Land becomes WTF Land in terms of visuals. There is a disturbing and haunting beauty in the art style that will strike your eyes. The color scheme used in the game helps a lot to sell the atmosphere. There isn't much warmth in the game. Most prevalent are black and brown, however, there is another one, purple. I might read too much into this, but I think there are two reasons for using it. First one is simple, it just stands out from the rest. The second is a deeper reason, again like everything else. Here is a quote. The negative meaning of purple are decadence, yeah, conceit yeah, and pomposity. Purple is also a color of mourning. Purple have been used in the care of mental nervous disorders because they have shown to help balance the mind and transform obsession and fears. End quote. I do some digging about the game and I'm pretty sure I'm very close to the meaning behind it. Sound is excellent also. The music is primarily ambient synth tracks, non-intrusive, just playing in the background and it manages to sell the dark atmosphere painted by the visuals. When something important happens, music picks up to emphasize the significance of the event. It's not a soundtrack I would listen outside the game, but I appreciated how well it fits the tone. Voice acting is solid, a personal standout is Murmur the Magnificent, a coin operated fortune teller, he's just ahead, with his smoky silk voice. Not gone, Querent. Nearly dead. Again and again she comes to this well, to weep and leap at the sound of the shriek. Which of you will save the other? What helps elevate the performance of the voice actors is the writing. They have a lot of material to work with, all are written to talk poetically and cryptically, giving a sense of mystery about them and the world. Besides some of the puzzles, I can't find other faults and this makes me infinitely happy. The game is a success from whichever point I look at it. What sets out to achieve, it does it exceptionally well. And what's that you might ask? Telling a mature story in a twisted and dark carnival. The setting, the story and the characters are mesmerizing, especially if you like twisted tales that allow you to reach your own conclusion. I'm sure most people will quickly figure out what the main theme is, but everything surrounding it is what makes the world so rich. The puzzles offer a decent variety with no repeats. I waited 3 years for the game and it didn't disappoint at all. Without a shadow of a doubt, it's worth a bee.